Hello, I am Amanda Wacker. Hola, I am Lanise Castro. Swadika, I'm Asama Lekpu. And we are The Triplicates. Welcome to the fifth of many episodes of The Triplicate Podcast. We are three first-gen women of color currently in our first year of our PhD program at UC San Diego. Last episode, we went through all the tips and tricks that you can use at your upcoming interview, so make sure you check that out. This week, we want to wish you all a happy Black History Month. Throughout the month, we'll be using our social media platforms to connect you to the voices of Black individuals in academic spaces, including those who are in the process or have completed advanced degrees. And we'd also like to celebrate our social media team, December and Micaela. Happy Black History Month, y'all! All right, so as you can tell from the episode title, we wanted to take a deep dive into how watching dating shows made us better PhD students. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> this all started. It's good. It's going to be good. Guys. Um, this all started with a paper that I saw. I'm going to link it in the show notes. It was published online in September. Uh, by Schrimner et al. I'm sorry, I probably mispronounced that. But it is called pandemic practice colon horror fans and morbidly curious individuals are more psychologically resilient during the COVID-19 pandemic basically the premise is that people the morbidly curious <laughs> that watch a lot of prepper movies you know end of the world stuff zombies deadly diseases aliens attacks um bird box probably <gasps> A good movie, oh, right? Sandra Bullock. Cringe. Every I remember everyone watching that. I've never. Oh my god! I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Anyways, the people that watch these kinds of movies exhibited, and I'm quoting them here: "quote exhibited both greater resilience and preparedness in the face of the pandemic." The idea here is that your whole brain has the opportunity to run through these scenarios while you're like kind of safe. You're not technically in danger, but you can still see like what would work and what would not work. You know, like. Never split up the group, but also don't add too many people into the group. <laughs> um, always have a backup plan. Reinforce the exits, whatever it is. You're kind of primed to think about things that could go wrong, and you have a chance to plan on like how to stand strong in the face of disaster. So come pandemic, your brain said, let me pull out all those old files from when we watched World War Z in 2013, and boom, you're Brad Pitt now. Like, we're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, I, I don't know. The whole idea was kind of cool. It made sense to me because, like, I learn a lot by watching. I, I can make macaroons now because I watch a bunch of YouTube videos and baking TV shows. So it's like, why couldn't this apply to other aspects of my life? And I think, Lenise, we had a moment of when you were talking about um, talking to a rotation PI. And then you were saying something to us. And both me and Asama said, did you get that from Love Island? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> I we're on their third rotation so mm -hmm. we've rotated with a couple PIs and there's just one lab that I really like the PI I think he's a great mentor cool science and I was like hey I just want to let you know I'm interested <laughs> you know just like it was like a really awkward conversation but I was like I don't want to leave the situation and think oh he didn't think I was interested in the lab. <laughs> Very important clarification there. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and it related to Love Island because I feel like these are the conversations these people have on the day bed. Yeah. And the what is it? The sun patio or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But basically the whole thing is like communication is like super important mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things that go wrong in dating shows because people are not communicating yes asama i see you nodding is there any <laughs> oh i was just thinking about like how we watched what at least 50 episodes <laughs> yes <laughs> in like a month and like every night so like when naturally when lanice used something like what we watch on the show we're like oh yeah that's from that episode yep i get it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we i think this month we did um was bachelorette in all of january too yeah <gasps> it like overlapped i think no do we do we watch bachelorette, bachelorette 
No, I and think the Bachelor having... started January 4th, but Bachelorette started last quarter. Yes. Yes. But both, I think both play a big role. I was thinking a lot about um, Tasha, mm-hmm. who had three wonderful guys mm-hmm. at the end of her, her, what is it, season, I guess? Mm-hmm. Journey. Journey. That's what they love to call it, a journey. Um, but she had three guys, and she waited until after everyone met each other's parents to start asking them, like, the big questions mm-hmm. like oh like i think she sent somebody home basically because she, they didn't have the same views like regarding church and yeah. faith or whatever mm-hmm. and that was such a big deal for her and it's like yeah you spent a lot of time building this connection with someone just to disagree about something you think is very important we could have had somebody else in there mm-hmm. or like i don't know just got rid of him a lot earlier yeah. if we communicated oh the c word oh we love it yeah um, but yeah, so that's basically, I mean, you were describing The Bachelorette, but I mean, it's basically rotations too, right? You have four amazing PIs and you're like, mm. the Roton. Oh no. Someone called us that once. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> and I was like, well, if we're rotating, aren't we rotors? Uh, no one thought that was cuter than Roton. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you're left with four amazing PIs. An idea for a reel. <laughs> for a what? A reel. Like oh, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, continue. Always um, thinking. <laughs> so yeah, you're in you in the end, you have like four amazing PIs or five or six, depending mm-hmm. on how many rotations you get to do or you want to do. And you're like, uh uh I think I tweeted recently. It rotations is basically a game of like, I like you, do you like me? <laughs> With the feels very third grade. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. Check yes. If <laughs> actually on the rotation evaluation form, mm-hmm. there is that box like check yes if this student would be welcome back into your lab, but it's not like available to us. Mm. Oh, <gasps> it was only for I, admin. I didn't know that. Yeah, thinking about how I've grown since. Because I haven't really been watching dating shows before hanging out with you guys, which seems odd. Yeah, because it seems Uh like such a big part of the way we spend time together. Yeah. Um, But I think I watched Bachelor like with my roommates. And that was like what we did to spend time together in the living room because we like barely saw each other. And that was like the, okay, Monday nights, you know, I'll see you. Okay. Um, so thinking about like the reoccurring reinforcement of like, okay, communication is important. And like I sit there and I like to talk. So I'd be like, oh my gosh, I don't agree with the way they're saying that. Or mm-hmm. I don't agree with how they're reacting. They shouldn't be, you know, pressuring them to do this or, um, you know, like, oh, the word choice could have been better. Things like that. And it's just like seeing my, myself apply those things and like just being really clear about like my expectations of you what are your expectations of me when I'm talking to like rotation PIs or possible rotation PIs or what can I expect moving forward and just like asking them flat out which I don't think I would have had maybe the words or like the wherewithal where what I'm the where with who the wherewithal <laughs> the where with what I feel like who? I saw that in a book recently I'm googling is that know. even a word I don't know definition I'm Googling right that's now. Oh, to that's not correct. It says the money or other means needed for a particular pur- purpose. I use that word incorrectly, but that's okay. Um, we learning. We learning. I just saw it in a book and I was like, oh, this probably means that. But it definitely applies to money, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, not completely wrong. Yes. Uh, being a PhD student, student does involve a lot of money. Um, or lack thereof. Oh. And being clear, if we a little a little bit broke <laughs> in the funding department, because I need to know how many grants I need to write. Exactly. If I want to work in your lab. Yes. And I think that brings up a good point. Don't be Tasha and wait until the last minute to ask about these important questions. Yeah, like you join a lab and you're like, oh, by the way, um, there's no money. <laughs> oh, Asama. Do you see yourself picking up any habits from TV shows or like things that you've read <laughs> or watched and applying them to PhD student life? From TV shows, like the dating ones we've been watching uh, or like any show? I think any. Let's open it to any. Mm, okay. I haven't been watching TV that much. I've been reading books though. Okay. Does that count? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Media. 
Um, and actually, I'm currently reading the Obama book. So Barack. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure There's he does. Two. <laughs> yes, the new one. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't need any more like sponsoring. Not that or he paid me. Yeah, yeah, hype. But um, yeah, I'm learning a lot about how he hasn't always been like you know, Mr. Person and like super hyper, like focus mm-hmm. and doing the right thing at all times. He consults different people mm-hmm. and ultimately like thinks about his wife, like what, she, what Michelle thinks and like his family. Mm-hmm. So I think like from that, I'm not saying that I'm going to run for president because that's not possible, <laughs> but it's just that, like, even Barack Obama wants advice from all these different people, like, want input. Mm, right. So I see, like, getting input and, like, trying to make the best decision, not just, like, from me, but also, like, those that are most important to me. Mm-hmm. Seems like seems like a good way to go. Mm. Mm. Do you think getting a lot of input from, like, different people maybe affects how you're thinking or does it make you more like rocky because i feel like sometimes i can be overwhelmed by like different opinions Mm. Mm. i think a little bit of both so something that i've been doing with all my rotations is talking to every member of the lab Mm, yes including the lab manager the undergrad um like later year PhD student, younger year PhD student. So you get like a 360 view. Um, in a lot of companies, they do that for promotions. Like they talk to your, um, someone who reports to you, someone who's on your peer level, someone who's above you. So to me, I think that makes sense. So I'm aware of whether or not um, that person, you know, is a good colleague or like is a good manager. Like it says a lot about the person, how they treat those who report to them Mm -hmm. yeah so I've been doing that and I really like it um and also I'm lucky that everyone has been super honest about their um experience with certain like with their PI Mm -hmm. so they're not just telling me what I want to hear as a PhD student Mm -hmm. I think that's unintentionally like Love Island (laughs) you don't have a type you want to know Who's talking to who? How this person treats the other person? <laughs> I'm telling you, there's so much connections to find in a PhD lab. Um, we're basically dating around, but like for a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first thing they do when they get into Love Island, like when the new cast member joins, is they sit down and they're like, okay, I just want to know like what's the vibe here? Like who's talking to who? How is this person's connection to that person? Are they willing to know to get to know other people? And I feel like those are all the questions PhD students come in. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what's the vibe of the lab? Are they taking students? Yes. Uh, are they nice? Uh, who do they have beef with? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And I remember there are times where someone would get chosen and they would say, I'm I'm set. Like, we're going to be friends. I already have someone, but I'm more than happy to tell you about everything else. And I think that also, like, happened with rotation because, like, not every professor I talk to is like, oh, sure, come rotate in my lab. Some would say like, oh, I'm busy, like with this quarter teaching blah, blah, blah class or like my students are doing X, Y, Z. So I guess friend zoning <laughs> does happen. Is it? A, I don't know if we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> is it like? <laughs> or is it like? Oh, what's this? Like, name? you're a cool student. You can't come in my lab, but like, I'll hook you up. It's like wingmanning yeah. <laughs> for other labs. But your committee can be your friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Technically, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't even like started to think Me about either. that. Totally. That is a second year problem. I heard that your committee should be friends with each other because. Yeah, that is also what I heard. Yeah, yeah it's like. If they're not, then instead of them helping you be the best scientist you can, it's you putting out, like, little fires. I'm dead. So. No, I do not have the time. What kind of made me feel better about this whole being a T- PhD, THD, oof, PhD student? Um, <laughs> <laughs> words, it's like a PhD student dating around labs. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that the awkwardness? awkwardness we feel um 
PIs do too sometimes. Wait, are they really, do they feel awkward? I think so. So someone quote yeah. tweeted me and was like, oh, it's the same way, like on our side of things. And I was like, what? what? <laughs> and, and they have to do this every year or yeah. a lot of years. More they feel once. awkward. <laughs> they have I would emotions? Like them, I would like them to communicate how they feel to me <laughs> in a plain manner so I understand where they're coming from. Speaking about rotations, we've been in rotation three and we haven't talked about it yet. So, Sama. Why me first? I don't know. That's just how I had this order. Okay, cool. <laughs> What's your question? How is your rotation three going? Good. What are you up to? Uh, so I'm rotating in Rachel Dutton's lab, which is the same lab that Amanda is rotating in. Um, I'm working on trying to figure out specific genes that are involved in bacteria and phage interactions. Woo. Whoa. That was such a lame woo. <sighs> oh, she call- I she don't want to clip lame. the audio. What? It's like when you go too loud. Yeah, yeah. Oh, being respectful of I'm the sorry. listeners' ears. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Oh. Or being kind to yourself later when you edit. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. Sorry, sorry. So sorry. far, so good. I get to work with one of my, mm, I would say, good friends, Tara. Wow. She's also my peer mentor. So I've been talking to her since like before I started, and she mm. sort of like helped me uh, learn about this and that. Right. So now we're actually working on a project together. So it's really cute. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I already time. I already messed up the first round of my experiment. And no it's one okay. no one's mad about it. So I think that's a good sign. I feel like I, no one's allowed to be mad at me. <laughs> I love that you said that with a smile on your face. Oh. That yeah. means despite not great not great results. You're always happy. Let's unpack what Lanise is saying later. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> for, her, for her situation. Oh. Oh, yeah. She's like, I love it for you guys, but I will be stressed about it. <laughs> it's imperative that I produce results in the six weeks. <laughs> but it doesn't matter for you guys. You're doing a great job. Yeah, <laughs> you are. I support you. And so friends. are you. Literally in my intro slide, I said, I might do this for two weeks and then do data analysis and everything will be fine. But in reality, I might have to redo a lot and that's fine. And everyone was just like chuckling because they were like, ha ha ha, that's true. Um, <laughs> but I think my actual, actual goal for the rotation is to get to know the lab, like from the science standpoint, from the mm-hmm. people standpoint. And I think I'm getting there. So even if I don't produce giant data sets at the end of this, I think I get, I'm getting a good sense of what the lab is about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Len- nice. Lenny's next. Oh. Oof. Um, yeah. So I'm focused, I'm doing my rotation three and I'm focusing on using CRISPR to find genes that are important for the interferon response to in response to influenza that's a lot of responses in there um and yeah i've also pretty much not produced much results as we have kind of touched on what's ditto but in threes Trito? <laughs> no. Trito? <laughs> um but which is fine though. triplicates what's nice Oh, <laughs> that should be our question. <laughs> How many PhD students have results at the end of rotation three? <laughs> Zero. Uh, yes. Anyways, um, <laughs> what was I saying? But something that's good, I guess, like to know is how the PI you're working under responds to things not working out, mm-hmm. troubleshooting. Um, and he's been great. He's told me that even though I'm not producing results, which is not what a rotation is for. No, it's here to learn, and I'm doing a great job, and I appreciate that. Oh, what about you, Amanda? Hi. Um, as previously stated, I am rotating in the same lab as one Osama like Boa. Um, I am working on a different project. Uh, it's very different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on making polymers, which I've never done before, and putting fungi in the polymers, which I've never worked with before. Um, and Brooke is trying to help me bless her soul. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, we is week five, I guess now, but for the last four weeks, three and a half, I guess I've been Googling and reading and watching YouTube videos about the best ways to make polymers. And, uh, boy, has it been a mess literally and mentally. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like research though. Yeah. Yes, I had a lot of fun. 
I'm not gonna lie. It oh, was a good time. Yeah. I was fun. Yeah. Oh. I was fun. <laughs> yes. Okay. Asama's usually the one making dad jokes. I'm gonna sneeze. Okay. Jeez. I was gonna be insightful. <laughs> I'm allergic to your bad jokes. <gasps> oh! oh, that was smooth. As you were saying, Asama? <laughs> oh, I was saying, uh, I was talking to um, this professor before, like, before I got to grad school. I asked her, what is research like? And then she said, oh, ha, 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 laugh. And, like, think of inside joke, laugh in her own head, blah, blah, blah. And then she goes, I tell my students that research is searching and then researching, then researching, then researching, and then researching. And maybe you'll find something. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of weird. Why would you say that? And now I'm like, yep. It makes sense. That's it. It's it just is. like. It's just searching. That's all it is. <laughs> and dating. Laughs. Yeah, okay. I was like, um. <laughs> um but yeah, like I, I was reading a bunch of papers and that didn't help. So then I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and those like maybe kind of helped in theory of like an idea of how to do stuff. But then it's like talking to more people, talking to some people at the engineering school. And then what finally was like my saving grace was a lab protocol for high schoolers <laughs> on how to make alginate polymers so I was basically doing a science lab but upscaling it so that I could make like a lot instead of just one um so yeah don't discount anything you read on the internet I guess <laughs> what high school was doing this it's like chemical it's like a chemical reaction oh. it's, it's like just cross-linking so I never make alginate polymers in I high mean school. that sounds very advanced it does um maybe it's some of the more well-funded I was about schools. to say that yeah mm-hmm. Hee 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 found that really funny. Because <laughs> I'm usually like, ha ha, attack. And then I go, jokes. Oh, but this time it's like, ooh, I mean, too she, real. She it's admitted true. that it was attack. I feel like, I know, because I was like, I feel like you're never joking. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> it goes up an entire octave <laughs> in your voice. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if it's like not joking, I would write you an email. Oh, and yeah. I will send it to you. I imagine getting an email from Asama <laughs> to whom it may concern. Because <laughs> you can't reach us on all the other DMs and group chats we have. There's so many. There is. There's so many platforms. There's even one for class. There's multiple oh. ones for class. <laughs> I think by the time this comes out, it'll be fine. But one kid made like a four page Google survey to like ask students how they were feeling about this class. Yes. And that's it was like detailed, like every aspect of the class, just so we can like make this experience better for us because some of us are not having a good time at all. Yeah. I'm tired. Yes. And sentence. <laughs> it's a lot. Like we're already on Zoom. Hella. Yeah. And now we have to schedule, like, for one week, I had to schedule, like, four different meetings Mm -hmm. because we just didn't, we had, like, no direction. So we needed direction, and then we needed to figure out what we were going to say and make sure we were under a time limit. And So basically, in class, there's three different group projects a week. So we have class Wednesday, Friday. So two group projects go are well like you're split into smaller groups but there's two components that are group project based in class you present one in the beginning of class in your groups and then you present the second also in your groups at the end of class and then friday it's another group project component if you're leading a discussion um and so that either requires that you meet with your group project people earlier in the week if you're presenting on Friday, you have to meet with our professors and it's always like some obscure hour. Like it's always like 8.30, 7.30 at night on a weekday. You're there for an hour. Let us know what you guys think about meeting with professors at like 9 p.m. Is that appropriate? Is that good practice? Is that professional? I think when I was making a tweet about this, I was trying to be clear with my wording that it was not the students that were saying, Hey, can you meet at 8 30 PM on a Wednesday? It was the professors offering this time as a time to meet to the students. Um, 
And I didn't like that. There's a lot of things we did not enjoy about this class, but like, I don't know. I think it's important. We are working with the department to let them know uh, that the students are unhappy. Similar things were said last quarter or last time this class was taught. So they're reviewing those course evals. And I think they're going to talk to the professors that are instructing the class and like, we'll see what happens. But I was ready to throw hands. So, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I hope something happens. If not for us, then for the next incoming class. Cause like, this is too much. Not in the middle of a pandemic, y'all. <laughs> yeah. I guess it sucks. But on a positive note, it's also like brought out a lot of other faculty that are very supportive of us. Yes. Not being happy. Like they want us to be happy. We know who the real ones are. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's it's good to see that we have people to turn to. Yeah. I don't think it's reflective of the department. Yeah, I think no. it's like an exception to the rule in BioSci at least. Like yeah. everyone else is pretty chill. <laughs> yeah. But I think a lot of us or well, I guess we can only speak. Let me not speak for everyone. But yes. this like made me really mad multiple days. And I was like, I shouldn't be this bad every single day. Yeah, no. So I was I'm, dreading going to class. Me too. Like, and I signed up for a PhD school. I love school. I love school. <laughs> <laughs> Same. What I do like, though, and like, I thought you were going to say this. Oh. But oh, in, in the line of, of it brought a lot of the faculty member, I think it, it's brought our PhD class, like our cohort. Yes together like the solidarity between us now is mm -hmm. like next level i feel like anyone would go to war for me if needed we might be crying but we're crying together yeah it's really nice everyone's working together we do like activities and stuff and i think after our last activity we did like a planting thing and then everyone went around and said things that like they have grown from in the last year and things they want to grow in. And I thought that was really cute. And it was very, everyone was being super vulnerable. And I don't know, it just like, it brought a lot of the interactions that I think how I was seeing people was kind of shallow just because like we never really had one-on-one -on -one conversations or anything. And now it's like, oh, okay. I kind of know their darkest spheres. And like, yes. it's like halfway through Love Island. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It all comes back in a circle. Yeah. Yes, Lenise. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. What's up? Do mm. you think there's a market for TV shows, series, just media? Not LB bra, but like actual <laughs> social media. Lenise with the jokes. It, uh, that's what I think of when people say media. Anyways, back back to my question. Um, She's like, back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Where we can follow people to learn about higher ed programs the way that we learn about dating on TV shows. What? Like, should I restructure? Okay, the question? so think about it. So, we are saying we watch prepper movies to prepare for an apocalypse. <laughs> apocalypse. I said acropolis. <laughs> an acropolis. Apocalypse. Um, so we watch the prepper movies and then to learn how to communicate, we watch dating TV shows. So it's like, what do you watch? What media do you consume to get ready for school? <laughs> how to get away with murder? <laughs> <laughs> to prepare for Among Us? Um, first of all, Miss <laughs> Annalyn Keating <laughs> made some points. <laughs> what do you call, uh, are they JDs? Are they, are they doctors? Lawyers? Yeah. I don't know. Esquire? Well, she's a professor, though. I yeah. it's like a greater... No, but like their their degree term. is JD. Is the... Is Jur the... Juris Doctor. <gasps> Are they so doctors? Doctor. Yeah. Are lawyers doctors? <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> I'm Googling it. <gasps> yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. This is funny. Lawyer school? Law school. <laughs> 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 it's only three years, though. Yeah. I feel like I'm being scammed. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Biologist. I agree. But they don't really have to run experiments yeah. or discover no, but... stuff. Yeah. The requirements it, are different. They have a lot of practical knowledge they have to apply. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm sure they do like case studies and stuff. The way 
Sorry. <laughs> study. Like, I guess. I don't know. But also, I think there's, like, a lot of vloggers on YouTube that are, like, follow me through my PhD. And not that I've watched a bunch of those kinds of videos, but, like, I'm glad they're there. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should watch them. <laughs> should we reenact um, Amanda having a moment, realizing that we are? <laughs> she went, oh, my God. That's what we're doing here. What the? <laughs> WTO. <laughs> no, it was it was kind of interesting because I was like, yeah, like, it'd be really cool. Because, like, I'm thinking about all these shows. Like, How to Get Away with Murder is, like, one of the only ones where they're, like, in school still. Yeah. Like, everything else, you know, like, they're like, oh, I have to study for this test. Like, oh, my God, I have to. I have so many things to study for. And then everything else is, like, well, now I'm thinking of the magicians who are in there. They're in, like, the magic school. <laughs> and, no offense to the magicians, though. That one That's was wild. Man. They were, like, episode three, we're bringing back someone from the dead. <laughs> That's not practical knowledge. Maybe what I learned from that show is don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Um, but, like, everything else is, like they're already in their job and it's like it's it's not them like figuring out how to navigate time management and academia yeah. academia academia rotation academia <laughs> application <laughs> but there's also like hella podcasts out there there are mm-hmm. yeah focusing on grad life personal finance <laughs> personal finance yeah i think there's just i think also Maybe I would like a curated list. I feel like there's so much and there's so much I want to listen to. But also if it's like, I don't know, if sometimes people are like talk too slow. So I have to put it on like 1.5 speed to listen. <laughs> Wait, is there an option to do that for ours? Like to make things go faster or slower? Um, yeah. So if you're on Apple podcast in the mm. bottom mm. left corner, it says like 1x and you just tap it. Oh, oh okay. I think you can do it on Spotify, too. But, like, that's the only place I really listen to podcasts. It's so. almost like I've been checking the sound on these at 1x speed. No, because I, I think, like, I've been told that I talk too fast. So now I'm thinking, like, nah, y'all. I oh, no, no, no. Yeah. No, I mean, like, like our bioinformatics teacher, I love him so much. <laughs> he has a wonderful Irish accent. It makes my heart so happy. Yes. Um, I have a so- soft spot for Irish men, I think. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm Hosier. Not saying that right now. Uh, Nile Grant. Oh. Barry Grant. <laughs> Amanda, timing. He's actually really nice. I emailed him about being overwhelmed and he was like, take your time. But like after I had that pressure of like having to get things done in like two and a half days or whatever, I f- was able to accomplish things that was less stressed. So like I still turn everything in on time, but now I was less. It was he's a nice dude, um, but the point is, I think he talks really slow, so I have to put it on like one point five, one point seven five speed, um, to like get through the class at a pace my brain likes. Do you think he's slow only with the ones that are pre-recorded, or also like the live YouTube sessions? No, I put everything on one point five speed. Okay. Mm, yeah okay guys honestly <laughs> y'all should hit me with that influencer money the way <laughs> hashtag or what's at thermo fisher what's up what's good? <laughs> she said i'm shooting my shot um <laughs> we mentioned barack obama barack i know you want to help us <laughs> we're here you think barack obama gonna sponsor us <laughs> Oh, at, hoser. at hoser at hoser <laughs> let's just he all might. the name drop he might uh, at niall haran i also mentioned you um at sonia neal <laughs> sonia neal does enough for this for this, for this we can we we can ask somebody else <laughs> um also shout out to sonia neal for winning an award for ooh. what was the award exactly the 2020 inclusive excellence award so what did we learn today? I, I think we should just wrap it up. First, dating shows are important to learn communication. Second, watching zombie movies helps you in real life sometimes. Yeah. Third, lawyers can be doctors. <laughs> Stop. Anything else you guys learned today that you would like to share with the class? <laughs> okay. Wear your mask. Wear, wear two masks, actually. Over Let's your do nose. That. Over your nose. There's like mutant COVID it's fine. It's stay inside. Should we no. throw a big at at Florida? At, at the entirety of Florida, at the yes. Of Florida. I've been oh, seeing people's like Instagram <laughs> stories, and they're like, 
on a rooftop, no mask, and they're dancing with people, and they're like, oh, we're outside. I'm like, the virus can be outside, too. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe we're not communicating it properly. (laughs) They're like, we're outside. We're good. It's like, it's not like that. Let's round out the show. Let's do some observations. Let's run some stats. Asama, would you like to share the question we are asking this week? Okay. How many of our PhD students learned something useful from watching TV shows? I definitely have used my Love Island knowledge in reality. So, yes. I agree. Me too. I learned a lot of cool British words. Like, (laughs) pie? Pied is a good one. My favorite one is categorically. (laughs) Oh, he's a geezer. He's a what? A geezer. (laughs) That is a good one. Um, Or like, um, she's a bit chatty. Okay, so are we just going to do bad British accents for the rest of the show? (laughs) All right. not bad. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) Sama. She's like, I'm actually good. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. Stop. Um, Anywho. So 100% of the PhD students in our study have learned something from watching TV shows. If there's anything you would like to share with us, please feel free to reach out. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at triplicatespod, and then you can email us at triplicatespod at gmail.com. If you like us, support us on patreon.com slash triplicatespod. And with that, obrigada and ciao. Adios y gracias. Bye, kapunha. <laughs> You should keep that in. <laughs> <laughs>